want to, now you have, um, you have three, you had three sisters, two sisters and a two brother? Two sisters and a brother. Okay, and their names? My brother's name is Victor Trujillo, and he retired from state engineers and the U.S. Geological Survey um, about 10 years ago, and he lives in Domingo. And my sister Phyllis had just retired from doing social work in San Pedro, California, and was she had gone to school in the near school to her house and asked if she could be a volunteer the next year at that school. And she hadn't even gotten her first retirement check and something she came to take, well, to help us take care of my mom. And she hadn't been with my mom but about nine days when she had this the heart attack and we could not save her, she died. And Phyllis had, has a big family. It was real hard letting them know what had happened overnight. And they couldn't understand either what could have happened to their mom. And my mom was already 90 years old, so it didn't take but a few months and she died too mm -hmm. in 1991. And your, and your other sister? And my other sister is Teresa, and she has five sons. And at the time that my mom died, three of them were still at home with her and Joe. And Joe would would take care of the boys so she could come and take turns with me. And we took care of our mom mm -hmm. till she died. And my mom died in Deming. And she lived by her sister Josephine. And some of these saints that I'm keeping there were my Aunt Josie's. And I happened to inherit them because she too didn't outlive uh, the rest of them too long. She died too, very soon afterwards. Now, your uh, on your aunts and uncles, you had quite an extended family in Monticello, and we have talked previously about how there would be a parcel of land, but then, as the land needed to be cut up, it couldn't support a big family, and so then there was a migration of over the over a canyon and down into another valley. Would you like to talk about how, they, how the population spread out from Monticello? Yes, uh, I really was not present to see that. I, I'm just talking about what I would hear. And they would say that, like my, my uncle Vicente and my uncle Celestino, they were the oldest two brothers. When their family began to grow and they did have just, just a little parcel of land by where the Padillas are now. One of those old houses down the hill was theirs. And it could, they couldn't support their family. So they went below, uh, down into the valley below where the old Alamosita, the first beginnings of Cañada La Mosa were, when even before there was a lake or And anything. that would have been where Zapata was, where now it's present three sisters. On that, where it was way down at the base Close to the to close to the close where, to there and to the edge of the Rio Grande and it did have farmland it appears and they took a homestead there the two of them um, later they sold it to to VG Trujillo to Villaldo and some of the other Trujillos and they moved to Silver City because of the mining days and they decided to go work in the in the mines. Mm -hmm. And their those cousins grew up in Silver City, Cobre, that area. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, and isn't in fact Cel uh, Celestino is buried in Central? Isn't yes, it? in Central because and Tio Vicente later went to California because his oldest daughter married a man from California, and uh, this was during the Depression, and he went to took the the younger kids that he they were not old enough yet to make a living on their own and they moved to California and we didn't see them very often. Maybe we would see them close to Christmas time or for when someone died. Then some of our other cousins moved to Las Palomas and later we found out that that's how come we were related to all of the Armijos because we had a great aunt Victoria Trujillo that became a grandmother to a lot of the Armijos but we didn't know this until we began to search the records, why they all called each other cousins. We didn't know the connections. 
but they came to Las Palomas and homesteaded there. And then others crossed the mountain, and they used to say how they could do that walking to dances and go uphill and downhill and go to dances in Las Animas or San Miguel because they had moved into those valleys looking for land and established homesteads and we too didn't know how come these people in San Miguel too were all our cousins and these people in uh, Las Animas they were our cousins the Mirandas the whatever they ended up just moving but they originally a lot of them were from Monticello or Placitas or had and they also came down all the way to Array at that all time. All the way was, to Array. It was a Nito, it was um, Bonito. Yes. Pueblo, Arroyo, Arroyo Bonito. Arroyo, Arroyo Bonito. And, and the Trujillos there were tied back into the Monticello group as well. And they also tied into the Vincomos and the Grijalvas. And they used to call them cousins, but I didn't know why. Now I know that one of my great, great aunts, whose name was Petra, was the Vincomos and Grijalvas great grandmother. But I, I never knew this one until I moved. And that I began to ask my dad questions. And my dad said, well, that was our Aunt Petra. And she was a real leader, he'd say. Everyone waited for a funeral. When there was a funeral, everyone waited till she arrived with all her entourage, you know, to the family. Or if there was a wedding, everyone would wait till she arrived because she decided how to give all the orders. You, you do the bizcochitos, you do the red chili, you do the killing the pork outdoors and that set up the ovens outdoors to take care of all of this and she'd say and we're going to stay up all night so that this food will be fresh and won't spoil <laughs> for whatever and she was the Bencomas and Grijalva's great grandmother I found out now isn't that something now when when um, Juan Neposanimo Trujillo passed away and he was his wife was Vidal Torres who was much younger than Juan mm -hmm. Annie. Yes, she was just forty eight years old. Story says when he died, because she had married him when she was just like thirteen years old. She had nothing to do with her wedding. Her dad promised her to Juan and Trujillo and and she had nothing to say about it except that she said, Well who's getting married when she heard the commotion? And they said, you are. And she said, oh, no, I'm not. And she went and hid under a bed. <laughs> and they had to retrieve her. And her mom told her, well, you're going to be well taken care of because he has his mother, and he's going to hire a woman to be with you, uh, I guess, to teach her how to do everything. And she said, sure enough, that there was someone living with her and his mother for like three years when her first son was born and then after that she was on her own. <laughs> and you are named after the daughter. Yes, I, she was my godmother when we went back to Monticello after being born in Deming and uh, so I inherited her name Vidal which is very hard to pronounce and some people <laughs> say well where did you get that name? Isn't that a man's name or a last name? And it is, it's a man's name and it's also a last name but I don't know how far she got it. One of the things that you told me was that when Juan, Juan Neposanimo died, that Frank Winston showed up with the first commercial coffin. That had ever been brought to Cañada La Mosa. And they said he had a brand new wagon, uh, that it was green and orange wheeled with uh, two teams of horses. And he was bringing a lot of the relatives with him for the meeting with my grandmother. And he bought the first commercial coffin to Monticello and my grandmother said, well, I don't know that I can pay for it. And she said, how much is it going to cost? He said, it's not going to cost a cent. He said, um, this is what I want to give him before, you know, at the end. And apparently they were good friends. I guess that they were, it sounded as if though they bartered and traded a lot. Uh, it sounds as if though my grandpa would take him all of the wheat he could gather, all of the corn alfalfa, and then he in turn would, uh, I guess, would supply him with goods that that the people in Cañada La Mosa needed, you know, for living, like basic stuff. And it sounded more like it was just uh, 
food, coffee, salt, baking powder, things that they could not produce. And Frank Winston was a very was a very generous man. That's why the, the name the town changed its name from Fairview yes. to Winston in honor and of that. He was a mentor to Villialdo, to Vichy Trujillo. Mm -hmm. And I think he had a lot to do with with his um, training him to be a merchant of of sorts, you know, all kinds of trading. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this other the priest had something to do with his education mm -hmm. and in turn he became a good uh, a mentor to all of the younger Trujillos I would think because I don't think they could I don't think they could study in English the schools all taught in Spanish territorial days teachers taught in Spanish they read and wrote in Spanish and I think this with about English using English had to come through through people like Frank Winston and B.G. Trujillo and, and the old families in Sierra County like the Cooks and the Elkins and uh, many others mm -hmm. um, like in, uh, in Chloride and Winston. Shirley Watson is still alive and she comes from an old family uh, in Chloride and Winston. And then Georgia Dines, remember Georgia mm -hmm. Hale? Mm -hmm. She comes from an old family. Georgia would tell me that uh, she didn't speak Spanish so well, but later she did as she grew older. But she would hear them sing together, the Dines and the Lunas and the Trujillos would get together in a big bonfire and play the guitar and just sit on the ground. And they would sing songs that they composed. And one of the songs was uh, this about two cowboys. One was Joe Miranda from Monticello and the other one was Johnny Dines from from uh, Chloride and Winston. And that they would compose this song that said, uh, uh, my name's Joe Miranda, my name's Johnny Dines. We're just a simple cowboy that everybody knows. <laughs> and that they would strip the guitar and just sing and sing the same words over and over. And that was real fascinating to me. Because I could just see these guys, you know, mm -hmm. as she just as mm -hmm. they described them. Mm -hmm. But do you know that that uh, even my grandma would tell me they were the best cowboys ever, too, that you ever saw. They would enter all of the cowboy contests and win those two together, Joe Miranda and Johnny Dines, because they were, I guess they were so skillful working together as cowboys. Was Joe Miranda, was that a brother to Vivian Miranda? Uh, I think he was a first cousin, a first cousin. And then there were other, uh, like Benny Miranda that just died not so long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, her husband, I think, was their nephew. But I'm not, I'm not sure, but they're all the same family. Mm -hmm. And then one of those women in the Miranda, you'll see in that roster that we just got, mm -hmm. the document, mm -hmm. her name was Cesaria, and there she is. Mm -hmm. So she was like my dad's great aunt. Mm -hmm. So the Melandas were tied also into the Trujillos as well. Yeah. But as well were the Gutierrez's and the Ortegas. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. 